All right, so we're going to cover the internal structures of the sheep brain. We've already done the dissection, and uh, we did a mid-sagittal section, or roughly a mid-sagittal section, uh, through the brain to show you these structures. Now, uh, we'll start over here on, on this half here, and then we'll work our way over here in a moment, right? So, again, this is largely the cerebrum here, and we see this band of white tissue here as I follow along here, this band of white tissue that actually connects the left and right hemisphere from, to each other and allows them to communicate is known as the corpus callosum. And the corpus callosum forms the roof, as I like to call it, of the lateral ventricle, which exists in here. You can't see it very well at the moment because it's covered by a thin layer that separates them, very much like the nasal septum separates the two sides of the nose or the nasal cavity, right? This thin membrane here that separates the two lateral ventricles is known as the septum pellucidum. So we see that thin membrane here called the septum pellucidum. So the corpus callosum forms the roof of the lateral ventricle. And then this arching white band of tissue here forms the floor of the lateral ventricle. And this um, arching structure here is known as the fornix. Right? Ironically, th this structure was named uh, by the early anatomists, which of course were men, uh, after the Roman, um, the, the archways into Roman prostitution centers that were called fornixes, or, forn or sorry, fornix or fornices. And so it got its name apparently after the name of a Roman brothel. So this is known as the fornix. Now, the fornix forms the floor of the, where the lateral ventricle is. It also forms the roof of the third ventricle that we see in this space here. Now, this region here of the brain is known as the thalamus. And just inferior to the thalamus is called the hypothalamus, right where I've got the probe right here. Now, the lateral ventricle the, uh, each lateral ventricle, because there are two, connects with the singular third ventricle, which we call the third ventricle again, right? And the third ventricle connects via this small pathway here that is called either the mesencephalic duct or the cerebral aqueduct. So it connects to the fourth ventricle seen here in this space that I'm opening. So this is the fourth ventricle in here. Now, this region here is the uh, a sagittal uh, section of the cerebral peduncles. This bump here is the pons, and this region here is the medulla oblongata. Obviously, this is a uh, roughly mid-sagittal section of the cerebellum, and this white matter here within the actual cerebellum is known as the arbor vitae. Now moving our, our way back up here for a moment, this structure here, which is just posterior to the thalamus and just inferior to the corpus callosum and just, uh, yeah, yeah, actually that's a better way to say it, just inferior to the corpus callosum and just posterior to the thalamus. This structure here is known as the pineal gland or the pineal body, or the epithalamus. Either one of these three ways you want to name it is fine. Now, the, the epithalamus or pineal gland sits directly superior to literally the superior colliculus, which is this bump here. And then we can see the inferior colliculus right here. And again, these two structures along with their twins on the other side of the brain are known as the tectal plate or corpora quadrigemina. Now, working our way over to this side of the brain here for a moment, just to show you this space that the probe is in that is formed by the corpus callosum on top and the fornix on the bottom here, this is the lateral ventricle, right? And so when we look over at this brain here, now we see that that membrane covering that hole that I was able to put the probe in on the other half of the brain here. 
right? So we cannot get to the ventricle, obviously, because that septum pellucidum is in the way. Here, that septum pellucidum is not present in this, thus I can actually get it in, uh, get the probe in there very easily, show you the actual space that it occupies. Just beneath it here again, just to cover that, is the third ventricle, and then the fourth ventricle exists right here between the brain stem and the cerebellum.